Hello and welcome to Euchromedia.com. My name is Sergey Proknevsky and today's daily tip is for loop in After Effects. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so we are in After Effects and for this example, I have this for loop expression applied to the source text of my Euchromedia text. So for loop has three statements within it and these three statements determine how often this expression is run. So for example, the first statement is something that's executed before the loop starts. So a lot of times you see like a variable and it equals to a number. So a lot of times you see I equals zero. And what that does is just basically determines when your loop starts. So if I is zero, then your loop is gonna start at zero. And by the way, a variable can be anything. My variable is I, but it can be really anything that's JavaScript safe. All right, so the second statement is where you define the condition for running the loop. For example, we know that I is zero. And in here we can say, as long as I is less than, let's say five, then we'll just keep running this loop. So as long as I is less than five, we're gonna run this expression. And as soon as it becomes five or greater, then we stop the expression. Now the third statement is executed each time after the loop has been executed. So a lot of times you see something like this. You see I plus plus. You're saying I plus one. So it incrementally will increase by one. So that's what that means, I plus one. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So in here, actually before we get to that, I'm gonna set a variable, I'm gonna say N, you're gonna equal to just an empty string. And in here, I'm gonna say N, you're gonna plus equal to I. So you're gonna be this I number. So if I run this, you know, it's gonna go, I is gonna become zero in the first loop. So that's why we see zero. And then when it's done, it's gonna go to the second loop. And then in the second loop, I is gonna become one. And then in the third loop is gonna become two. That's why we see two and then three and then four. And when I becomes five, you can see that it stops because again, five is not less than five. And so essentially that's what it does. Now you might be wondering, what does this plus equal mean? And what that is, is an assignment operator. And what it does, it allows you to add something to a variable and then store the result in that variable. It kind of essentially the same thing as saying N, you're gonna equal to N plus I. So if I let go of this, you can see it's the exact same thing. But I'm gonna undo this. Now, you know how I was telling you about how I equals zero, that's like the starting point of your loop. So right now we start at zero. So if I change this number to two, you can see that it starts at two now. So two, three, four. So I hope this makes sense. Now let's let's take it a bit further here. So I'm gonna change that to zero again. And then in here, instead of saying I, let's do something else. So I'm gonna say, let's add a string. So in here, I'm gonna say UM. So if I let go, it's gonna run UM five times. So I can add to that, I can say plus I, and then it's gonna add a number right after the UM. So zero and then one, two, so that's good. And then we can say plus space. So that's cool, but let's try something else. Let's do a random expression here. So I'm gonna say, and you're gonna plus equal to, and then in here I'm gonna say random. And so if I let go, we'll see a bunch of numbers. So we need to round it up. So I'm gonna say math period round, and then I'll put random inside my parentheses. So if I let go now, we're getting something. So we're getting some numbers. And obviously it's just zero between one. So inside this random here, I'm gonna say, give me a random number between zero and nine. So now we're getting an interesting feel here. So that's kind of cool. So you can definitely see how useful this can be. And by the way, we can keep going with this. We can copy this and paste it in here. And we have to change our variable to something else because we already have one in here. So I'm gonna do J, because it kind of looks like I. All right, J and J. So we can run for loop within the for loop. So we say, you know, this for loop is gonna run this for loop plus or you know whatever the variable comes out of that, n, you're gonna plus equal to uh, a new line. So it's gonna go to a new line. So like this, let's close the curly bracket. If I let go right now, you can see that it kind of puts it on a different line. So you can definitely see how useful this can be. You can kind of change the number. So maybe let's do like 12, you'll increase it here. You know, you can decrease it here. You can say three and so on. 
So I hope so far it's kind of making sense. I know for loop is a bit difficult to understand, but let me show you another practical example for this. So before we get to our example, I kind of want to keep going with this statement three. I kind of want to show you more what it can do. So right now we're saying that I is going to increase incrementally by one. So that's why we see zero, one, two. So with each loop, it increases by one because we see this I here, it increases by one. Now it's not much different than saying it this way. So if you say it plus equal one, if you let go right now, it's the same thing. So we're saying I increase by one. Now, what if I wanted for it to increase by two? So right now it's zero, then in the next loop it would be plus two, so it would skip one, so it'd be two and then four. How would I do this? So all I have to do is change the number here. I would say increase by two, and then it would give me zero, two, four. You know, I can say increase by four, and it'll go from zero to four. So you kind of get the idea of how useful this can be. All right, so for this example, we're going to use split and character add method. So if you don't know anything about these two, definitely check out tip number 35 and 37. And so essentially what this expression is doing here, so it's applied to this text, and it's grabbing the this text in here, all these words, and then it splits all these words, like each word into an index. And then it's grabbing the index number six, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, is grabbing that word. And then it's grabbing the first letter of that word. So that's why we see S in here. Now, so what I want to do, instead of grabbing one word, I want to grab all of them. So print a first letter of each word. And so that's where for loop comes in handy. So in here, I'm going to say the following. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to say N, you're going to equal to an empty string. And then we're going to do our for loop in here. So I'm going to say for, and the first statement, we're going to define our variable. So I'm going to say I, you're going to equal to zero. And then second one is going to be the condition. So I'm going to say, as long as I is less than, let's do five for right now, then we're going to run this expression. So as long as I is less than five, this expression is going to be working. And then after that, we're going to say increase incrementally by one. So I plus plus. And then we'll do open curly bracket to run this expression in, and then we'll close the curly bracket. And also we're going to add something here. So we're going to say N, you're going to plus equal to this. So if I run this right now, you can see we just have duplicates of the same thing because essentially what it's doing, it's running this line over and over, you know, five times. That's, that's why we see it five times. Now it, we want this index to change. So the first time it's going to run, we want it to be zero. And then the second time it runs, we want the second word and third and, and so on. So we're going to change this index of the word that it's grabbing to I because I is changing each time. Okay. So if I let go, now you can see that it's grabbing every single one until it runs this condition. So how do I set this up to where instead of me manually setting how many you know words I want to grab, I wanted to always see all of my indexes. How do I make that happen? So I'm going to select this five and I'll pick up to this text in here and we'll do the split here. So I'm going to say split all the text into index. So I'm going to say split where the space is. So now it's going to split all of them into a separate index. And then I want to see all of those indexes. So I'm going to say, give me the length. So it's going to tell me how many indexes there are in that. So essentially it will give me all of them. So if I let go, you can see that it's working quite well. All right. Thank you so much for watching this quick tip. I really hope you found it useful. And if you have, make sure you like this video, share it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media. But until next time, my name is Sergey Praknevsky and this is ukramedia.com.